Hello everyone and welcome to the lecture on setting ticks and limits. If you haven't, please import NumPy and matplotlib. I've already done that. So what we'll do is we'll use the sine and cosine function that we saw in the previous lectures and see how we can set ticks and limits. We briefly looked at those in the previous lecture. Okay. So we have our x axis for our x. We use numpy's line space method and we'll use points from negative six to six. And we have defined two functions here, cosine and sine function, and we saved it in, in variables cosine and sine. Now let's call matplotlib's plot function and then pass x and cosine or x and y axis so plt.plot x and sine so let's change this default behaviors let's set the color of our cosine function to red and let's pass or use a line width of 2.5 and for our sine function let's change the color to green and for our line widths, let's use 3.5. Let's run it. So here we have a figure that looks like this. And you can change the figure size by passing the fig size attribute to your figure. So we did that by calling matplotlib's figure method and then pass the fixed size attribute. So fixed size and then pass a value that best fits your notebook. For me, I think 10 by five or 10 by six makes the graph very nice. Okay, 10 by five, it's okay. Next, what we'll do is let's pass the xlim attribute or call the xlim function and adjust the x limit values and we'll do the same for our y limit okay so for that we'll simply call matplotlib's x limit function and pass whatever value we want let's say if we want to change it from negative 9 to 9 we can simply say negative 9 to 9 okay and for our y-axis we can call matplotlib's ylim function and then pass whatever value we want to use let's say negative 1.4 to positive 1.4 and if we run it we have a graph that looks like this so that this is one way of changing the x limit and y limit values we simply call the xlim function and then pass whatever value we want right now let me show you another method so i'll copy this paste it here and what we'll do next is use the minimum and maximum functions or methods okay so we'll use we'll call a function on this for our x-axis and we'll call a function on our y-axis let's see how we can do that so we first call the x -lim function and earlier we passed a value of what negative 9 to 9 or negative 10 to 10 right so here we passed negative 9 to 9 instead of that what we can do is we can take our x variable which is our x-axis and since those are numbers we can call the minimum function right so this basically means take the minimum which is negative six in our case and then let's say add let's add 
2.2 for instance so we can do that and then for our maximum point we can also call the maximum method so x dot max which is 6 right that's the maximum value for our x axis and then we can simply call we can simply add whatever value we want let's say 0 0.5 let me change this value to instead of 2.2 .2, let me make it 0 0.2 so we can easily see the graph so now our minimum value should be oh, let, let me just change it to 0.5 so now our minimum value should be instead of negative 6 it should be negative 5.5 .5, and our maximum value should be 6.5 okay let's run this you see here we have from negative 5.5 .5 to 6.5 okay that's what you see here it's shifted by 0.5 here for the maximum and for the minimum it's shifted to the right by 0.5 okay to see the difference much clearly what we'll do is let me comment this out and then run another function here so for our minimum let's change this to negative 2 and for our maximum let's add 2 now our graph will expand instead of being from negative 6 to 6 the x limit will now change to negative 8 to positive 8 let me run it and show you now you can clearly see the difference right from negative 8 to positive 8 okay and we can do the same for our y limit so we can simply call y limb and then pass let's say we can use the cosine or sine function in this case it doesn't matter let's use the sine function so sine and then we'll call the minimum function okay and sign that maximum and we can change it so here we just added two or subtracted two you can also use the multiplication or division since those values are numbers okay in this case let's multiply it by 1.3 for instance and let's do the same thing for our maximum value let's run our cell now and here you see our y limit for our graph has changed instead of being from negative 1 to 1 now we have multiplied it by 1.3 great another thing we can do is adjust our x and y ticks we can have however many ticks that we want let me copy this and show you how we can do that in the previous lecture we have used the numpy line space method to adjust our x and y ticks if you remember this is the function that we used we called the x ticks method and then used the numpy line space method and then pass the starting and ending points and then how many ticks that we want right so we already know that for this example i'll show you another method okay let's see how we can do that first we'll call the x ticks methods and what we can do is if we want specific ticks to be used we can pass those values as a list let's say we want a tick at negative six and then at negative three maybe 
and then at zero, and then at three, and six. So we can do that. And let's do the same for our y ticks. So we'll call matplotlib's y ticks method, and then pass a list of values that we want the tick. Let's say we want to see the tick at negative one, and then negative point four, and then let's say zero, and then let's say at point five, and then point eight and one. So it doesn't have to be precise. If you are using the line space numpy line space method, it will be precise. It will give you precise ticks. However, in this case, if you pass the values as a list, it doesn't have to be precise. So whatever value you pass, you'll see the ticks at those values. You see here? These are the values that I specified. Negative 4, 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, and 1. And I see the ticks there. Whereas on the y-axis, on the x-axis, I passed precise values. So I see those values. And again, we can adjust those. For instance, I can add one here and then run it. And now I'll see an additional tick here. Great. This is what I have for the lecture on setting ticks and limits. Thank you, everyone. And I'll see you at the next lecture.